is Jason Porter with the Red Hat Developers Program, and we have Sebastian Blanc with us. Thanks for being with us, Sebastian. Thank you. Now, I, I know it, uh, your tenure at Red Hat, you've been doing a, a multitude of different things. Uh, I believe you started out working on uh, AeroGear yes. and some of our mobile initiatives. Exactly. And you also dabbled in some of the, uh, the IoT space as well. A little bit, not officially, but okay. uh, it's not 10 years, five years. <laughs> No, ten, just your, 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 your term here at Red Hat, oh, not yeah. ten years, oh, ten years. Oh, ten years, sorry. <laughs> it's all good. It's my French. Um, no, it's okay, <laughs> we, we won't hold it against you. Okay. It's all good. Uh, and now I believe you're working on uh, security in Keycloak, right? Exactly. I joined the Keycloak team uh, a few months ago. Okay. And uh, I'm really happy about it because it's an amazing project, fast-growing community, and uh, a lot of things to do. And people love it because, yeah, security is not most enjoying part of an application, but it's critical. Sure. And if you show people that you can make security easy and almost fun, uh, well, they really like it. And uh, so I really enjoy working on this project. Uh, I travel a lot in conferences to to advocate for this and uh, just showing people how in in ten minutes you can secure your app and add complete. Uh, identity management to your app and uh, while respecting modern protocols like OpenID and stuff like that, integrating social login, um, uh, you can even have user federation with uh, LDAP. So for instance, if you bring Keycloak to your company but you already have an LDAP directory with, with all your users there and you still want to use them, well, Keycloak can make the bridge. Okay. And so I can use something like Active Directory or something exactly. like that. Okay, very good. Yes. Very good. And uh, that can make the migration if you want to move away and do a full deployed uh, key cloak. Uh, but you can do a, a soft migration by, in the beginning, doing user federation with your LDAP users. Okay. And then slowly you can, yeah. Very good. Oh, I know uh, a lot of people looking at uh, security and whatnot, and we, we've talked a lot about uh, user identity and identity management with, with Keycloak, right? Uh, LDAP or various other data stores for um, the identity of, of the user. How, how else can I use Keycloak? Can I, can I use it to, say, uh, secure my application at a, at a method level or at a, at a class level? How, how, how fine-grained can how I fine -grained. get with, with uh, Keycloak? Okay, so Keycloak uh, has different options for, for security. The, the basic part is the authentication. So here we are not speaking about authorization yet, uh -huh. but that's the first part, the first layer. So we authenticate the user, and once you have that, well, we have a whole authorization layer and where you can do uh, attribute-based uh, authorization. Okay, very uh, nice. On, uh, you can integrate your business engine, uh, business, business engine rule like Drools. You can integrate Drools with Keycloak and, uh, well, make authorization decisions based on your uh, engine rule. So, um, and uh, But even without using our authorization layer, you can achieve pretty basic authorization stuff just by uh, using uh, role-based access, uh, that's pretty easy. Uh, just uh, for instance, if you are securing a Java EE app um, in your web.xml, you specify, specify security constraints, and you can say, well, for this URL, I just want users with the role admin to be able to access it. Okay. And so if you don't want to dive into the authorization layer, which can be pretty complicated, sure. you can achieve almost everything without touching that, so... Uh, oh, very good, yes. very good. Uh, now, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of history real quick. Uh, some of our viewers may be familiar with uh, a previous product or project that we had called Picket... Or, Picket Link. Uh, yeah, Picket Link. So how how do... or what, what's the history between Picket Link and Keycloak? Okay, so, uh, so Picket Link was the, the one of the first security projects uh, that I read at, mm -hmm. uh, but it was part of uh, it was integrated in the application server itself. So if you wanted to use uh, PicketLink, you had to install it on your application server, and once you deploy another application server, you had to install PicketLink there again. And that, that's not necessarily the case with Keycloak. Keycloak, that's, and the key point of Keycloak is 
having a single key cloak instance that can secure multiple apps. Excellent, very good. That's a really point of delegating your security. The security uh, uh, is not the matter, it's not the core of your business, so you delegate all this to an external server, which is Keycloak. And um, so, but we kept a lot of uh, picket link, picket link for instance, at the whole authorization uh, layer. We took that code and integrated it in Keycloak. Okay. And, um, and we, there's Pedro, uh, who was on the picket link, in, yep. Uh, yep. which is uh, now part of the Keycloak team. Okay, so, very good, yes. very good. So it, if I was using picket link at, uh, at some point in time, the, the migration step is to move to Keycloak. Exactly. Okay. The, yes. Very good. And uh, Keycloak also, for, for those interested in integrating with Keycloak, uh, Keycloak also has a REST endpoint that uh, I, I can get to and I can I can secure things like a, a mobile application, for example, using Keycloak via a REST call, right? Exactly. So with Keycloak, you can secure everything. So going from a front-end app being a web app or a mobile native app or an hybrid app, you can secure that. And you can secure whatever backend application you want, uh, microservices. It's all based on REST, uh, REST calls, and as long as you pass the authorization token in your header, and that you integrate the um, Keycloak adapter, so we have the Keycloak server, uh -huh. and then for each application, you need to install a small library, an adapter, that can communicate with Okay. Keycloak that can verify your token and stuff like that. Now is that, uh, is that a, a JavaScript adapter, Java, what, what do we, we have? have? So we have a whole set of adapters. Uh, first we have the Java adapters, so we have the Wildfly EAP adapter for the application server. Uh -huh. We have a Tomcat adapter, a Jetty adapter, we have a Spring Boot adapter, we have even have a Spring Security adapter, so if you are using Spring Security for instance and you want you don't want to change too much your code base, you still want to use the APIs of Spring Security, you can do that and in the same time integrate with Keycloak. So you keep doing so it's all just the like same thing. swapping out the back end. Exactly, exactly. And then we have uh, a Node.js adapter for your Node.js app. Oh, very nice. And then, uh, well, for the front end, we have a, um, a JavaScript library that, that will. You will be using this library when you secure your Angular app, for instance. Then you just have to install this uh, Keycloak uh, uh, JavaScript library, and that's it. Uh, from the community, we have a .NET adapter, and even a C, uh, a C Sharp, and I think a C++ adapter. So, Interesting. Yes, and um, well, we are waiting. We, we cannot offer all the adapters. We would like, for instance, we would like to have a Go adapter but we don't have the knowledge inside the team, so right. it will be really nice if from the community someone could contribute to a, a Go adapter, right. for instance. So if, if any of you watching out there are uh, big Go people, we, <laughs> we need some help on the, the Keycloak team getting Go Exactly, going. and the yeah. same stands for PHP. We have a lot of PHP developers asking for us if we have a PHP adapter. And again, we don't really have this knowledge inside the team, so again, if someone from the community wants to contribute with a PHP uh, adapter, that will be wonderful. Oh, very good, very good. Uh, let's see, one, one last question. So we, we've been hearing a lot about OpenShift recently. Uh, how, how can I, I leverage Keycloak with OpenShift? Well, uh, Keycloak is available on OpenShift, uh, so um, it will be, um, so I don't know how far we are, but uh, in the new version of OpenShift, OpenShift v3, there will be a cartridge. I don't know if you still say cartridges, but that was OpenShift. I'm not familiar with all the terminology. Okay, either, yeah, that was yeah. a term for OpenShift v3. <laughs> right. But yeah, uh, with the new OpenShift, one of the first products that will be available will be Keycloak. So. Excellent, very good. Yes. All right, uh, that'll wrap us, wrap us up. And uh, thank you, Sebastian, yeah. for, for coming. Thank and uh, just, uh, I'll, I'll help you plug real quick. So you've uh, you've got a conference coming up pretty pretty soon over in France, right? Exactly. So uh, next week there's Riviera Dev. That's a conference that I'm organizing with uh, some other Red Hat Red guys, Stéphane et Pardo from the Salem team. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice conference uh, on the beach, <laughs> not so far from there. <laughs> and we Sounds are, like a good conference. Yes, and this year we have 400 attendees, so we are really happy. We are a small conference, but growing pretty fast. So, Very good. Um, very good. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ready.